Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jason Avant. I'm here with my main man, Quint Michael. Q, say what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Another another week, another installment. Excited for it. So with further ado, let's get it. Let's, let's get into it. Before we get into the business, we want to make sure that everyone knows how to find us. You can find the Q&A podcast on Inside the Birds youtube channel again inside the birds youtube channel we're also on amazon apple music you can send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com thank you to adam and to jeff and to josh and to our new producer tyler strasser tyler big ups to you can't wait to meet you man and to all the fans that are tuning in each and every week. Thank you guys for your support. Let's get into this game. Our birds kicked the beans out of Skull, <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings, 24 to 7. And I saw the funniest meme. They showed the meme of uh, all the, the Vikings fans a couple of years ago on the stairs the rocky stairs and they took it over and they had their flags up and everything and then it showed the meme of michael jordan i took that personally <laughs> <laughs> it was so great yeah. i don't like they're making all type of stuff today it was it, it was it was a, it was a very good night the energy was electric in the stadium and just from you can feel it from the television it was it was unbelievable the guys are excited to play had a lot of energy tell me your overall thoughts about it big picture takeaway yeah, man, that, that was amazing. Um, you know, I was watching, I wasn't watching the stadium, I was watching at home and um, you could just feel it. You could just feel the energy through the through the television, man. It was just amazing from start to finish. That's the, the type of football, you know, we all love to see. Um, and, and, you know, I remember I remember seeing that live when they uh, when the Vikings fans did that in um, at the Rocky Stairs. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, what what is one of the worst things you can do to an Eagles fan is give them more momentum to yeah. really come after you. And and that, <laughs> a couple years yeah. later, it's still on, man. It's it's still on. We took that personally. The <laughs> Eagles the Eagles tweeted that it was, it was it was funny. It was hilarious. Actually, put it on Instagram too. Yeah. Funny. All right, so our our birds now um, defeat what we think is a good team. They handle them, you know. They they beat them pretty handily. And we're two and zero. Oh. We beat the light, the Lions. We beat the Vikings. In the current state, we're starting to own the NFC North right now, right? right. So um, we're trying to figure out what this team is about. What's the biggest reason for the team being two and zero? Oh? Is it Jalen Hurts' play? Is it because the emergence of a pass offense? Is it because our defense is doing well? Um, what do you think the biggest cat um the biggest reason for 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 the victories? I, I honestly I think the biggest the biggest reason is the players and the acquisitions that have been made. Um, not only have the the players that have been brought in and, and drafted been playing at a high level, um, the players that are you know second year players like like Jalen Hurts and um, you know players like Miles Sanders, guys that in the past have been kind of up and down. Um, two games into the season, they've been playing at a much higher level than we than we all of it inspect, expected. And so I think it's a, a combination of coaching has gotten much better and they've gotten more trust in those guys. But really, I mean, the players are the ones that are on the field. The players are the ones that are are making the plays. And and, and uh, so I, to me, I attribute attribute that all to um, the, the, you know, the players coming together and playing much better, man. Yeah, I think I I don't think that you can say it's one thing. I thought that the the defensive backs took it personally yesterday because that was a clinic. Linebackers and defensive backs on how to, you know, break up passes. They were on people's butt like they knew the game plan. It was something more than just them being hyped. They understood what the Vikings were doing and how they were trying to execute. And I don't think that the Vikings offense is that intricate for it to be that close and to get your hands on that many footballs is very, very hard to do in NFL. And they made it look so easily, um, so easy. 
Darius Slay or, or Big Play Slay could have gotten four picks last night. Like, literally, he could have had four picks. And usually you don't touch the ball that much from as a defensive back and or a linebacker. So um, I thought that they studied and they were prepared for this game by a light year. So, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons. I thought the offense carried the team the first game. I think the defense really carried the team in this last game. So um, it's an overall team effort. So I agree with you that the new acquisitions are definitely panning out. I do have some 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 further comments a little bit later about this though. Let's get into the offense <laughs> about that a little bit later. So let's get into like the offense. Let's get into the offense versus the Vikings defense. Um, Jalen Hurts goes 26 of 31, 331 yards. Um, one touchdown, one interception. Interception, and this is why I don't like interceptions always being on a quarterback, right? Um, Gainwell drops a pass right in his hands, and it's a pick. And that goes on a quarterback stats. Just like he throws, uh, you know, you throw a one-yard pass and the guy takes it for a touchdown. It should be the receiver's stat, not the quarterback stats. So I think that <laughs> they need to do a better job with stats, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just me talking, right? But anyhow, Jalen Hurts plays a, a, a wonderful game, beautiful game, amazing game. Yeah. Right? What do you think about his performance? And not just his performance, but his progression, because last year, playing coverage, getting home was a solution for most defenses. They played coverage. It didn't work. and He carved them up. You think that's something that we should be happy for in Philadelphia? Absolutely. I mean, that's something that we've all been, been talking about since the beginning. And, and if you really look back at the first game, in the second game, right? Two different um, types of game plans. You know, uh -huh. the Lions came out, they were blitzing, coming after it, and Jalen was doing a smart thing and tucking the ball and running and, and making plays with his feet when he needed to. And then almost the opposite game plan this week, um, you know, Eberflos came out just straight cover two, um, playing coverage, thinking that, hey, we're just going to wait until Jalen makes a mistake and gives us one, and he didn't. He just carved them up, like you said. And um, one of the biggest things to me um, that you can notice as a as a former player um, and, and a fan of the game that I notice, um, you know, the, the opening series, they went five wide empty. And usually you, you do that when you trust your quarterback. You do that when you say, OK, I'm going to put it on him. He's going to find the right matchups. He's going to find the right positions um, and, you know, put it on the quarterback's back. So. I was actually really pleased to see um, the, the, you know, the offensive coordinator Stike and kind of putting the ball in, in Jalen's hand and let and let him take the opportunity to, you know, show what he can do. And it's showing that his his progression is is probably farther ahead farther ahead this far than we all thought. Wow, so, um, I like that those comments, and I didn't think about that. Right, I, I didn't think about okay, and but it's true. Usually, when you come out and you take away the running option and you and you flank everyone else out you are saying that the quarterback has has autonomy and control and we're trusting him to protect the football they know we're passing we're and and they have to stop him we think that he's going to do better right so um i take that as a as a good sign here's where i was totally impressed with jalen hurts the formula for beating him is a fast linebacker and playing coverage. We can confuse him. He's not going to be able to get to number one or number two, number three, whatever it is. He's not going to get to three or four for sure. And maybe not even in check down. Last year, he took coverage sacks where, you know, um, you know, they came, they got to him, but there was somebody else, there was somebody open that he could have, he could have thrown it to. That wasn't the case yesterday. And for that to be in the second game is – and it wasn't just about him doing that. It was the confidence that he exuded. Yeah. He threw the ball with confidence. He wasn't aiming. He wasn't hoping it got there. He let it ride <laughs> on most of the throws, and he was extremely accurate to the point that he was almost in the second quarter before he missed the target. His first target was the long pass, the goal ball to A.J. Brown. That was the first one he missed of the day. 
right? So yeah, yeah, it was it was one of those games. Is like, is this the same person? <laughs> he was more comfortable with the play calling, his play calling, and understanding where his guys were. Now, I'm trying to contain like how excited I am to see that because it was the worst. It was basically. Play, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Jalen Hurts. I'm trying to contain it because I want him to succeed because teams will do what the Vikings have, you know, um, you know, did yesterday. It was basically playing the 2021 Jonathan Gannon defense the entire game. Boom. <laughs> That's it. Where teams carved us up. Week after week, all the good quarterbacks threw for 300 yards and they and they dinked and dunked us all the way down the field and, and no, we couldn't stop anything. That was a, the same defense, cover two, cover four, and cover six. Cover two, cover four, cover six, right? That was the, the, the entire game plan was that. And with, with no blitzing and with, with, with this straight four-man rush. It was, it was a four, four-man rush. It was really bizarre and weird. So I'm trying to see, even with that, we haven't seen him play this well. So to me, that's a step in the right direction. So I'm, I was thoroughly impressed. And when you consider that the only time that they were stopped was self-inflicted mistakes. It wasn't like they were getting balls knocked down. They couldn't uncover. It wasn't like, you know, they didn't have running lanes. Miles Sanders missed, I would say, two or three cuts that was worth about 45 yards or so. Like, you know, with he, he, he I don't know what it is. He, a Shady would have cut that thing back so fast, faster than heaven got the news. He had a few cutback lanes um, that, that, that could have went for some big yards. Um, I, I say two or three, not three or four, two or three. Um, I'm excited. I, I want to see him do this, you know, consistently, but this was a step in the right direction. I was very impressed. Absolutely. All right. So ball distributed different receivers. Last week we saw with the Lions, we saw A.J. Brown the entire time. A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard got three. Um, Zach Pascal had some. And then no Quez, no Devontae Smith. Now you've seen every all the receivers that were basically up get an opportunity besides Britain, right? So what do you think of, of that? Do you think that was like uh, Shane Steichen saying we need to get other guys involved? Do you think with Jalen Hurts um, figuring out that or feeling more comfortable getting other people or, hit, or, 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 or it was zone and they just started putting Devontae Smith in the spot? What do you think? Well, I think – I think it's all. Uh, I hate. I'm always saying this, but I feel like it was. It was kind of um, uh, an entire game plan. I think they definitely came into. You know, Steichen came into this game with the idea and the mindset of getting Devonte some catches early. I mean, the very first play, I believe, um, went to Devonte on a. Um, it seemed like a. It was an empty set. I think it was like a little. Yeah, no, it was his. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, get him, get get him going early. And then, so I think early on, it was kind of um, a game plan issue. But then I feel like as Jalen started to get into his zone and started to really feel comfortable and be able to read the def the defense, he started to just pick them apart and, um, you know, finding whoever's open. If you're open, you're going to get the ball. If the defense dictates it, you're going to get the ball. And I, that right there is scary because if all of the receiving core can, can play as well as they did and can, you know, run after the catch, you know, catch deep balls, catch slants, catch screens. If every single one of those receivers is able to do multiple things, it makes it way hard on the defense to really pinpoint. Yeah. So, so I, I was, I was very impressed with that. Spreading the ball around is is it, I'm a huge fan of it. Makes it tough on the defense. So, you know, hope it hopefully it continues. And hear what Q said. Q says something that I say all the time. The guys were running after the catch. Devontae Smith had a 19-yarder. Like, he caught it at five, ran for another 14 or so. You saw A.J. Brown stop and go up the sideline. There was multiple – Dallas Goddard ran after the catch. Running backs, Kenny Gainwell caught, caught an S at one middle, middle type screen, run after the catch. In order for you to get yak yards, the ball has to be in a good spot and you have to be on time. If the ball is late – the defender is close. 
the ball is uncatchable or in a, in a bad spot, you have to go down or stop, which brings the defender to you. If the ball is on the money and on time, you have yards after the catch. So that talks about how accurate Jalen Hurts is. And it talked about how prepared he was for this game and for this moment. And I'm just praying that this is who he is all the time. The man had over 83% completion percentage. And that has never occurred with Jalen Hurts. Never occurred. So everyone is, I told you so now in Philly. I told you this. I told you that. But this is something that has never occurred. He was 50, low 50s last week. He jumped with the 83%. He got, he almost said he's at 69% for the two games now. So almost 70%. I talk about completion percentage because that's a correlation between wins and losses. You got to be able to complete passes if you're going to throw it this much efficiently. You got to be able to do it at a high level. And he did that. Distributing it to distributing it to all the receivers is, is a plus. It keeps everyone happy. Um, yeah. Did you want to come back in on that? No, man, you you you're right on point with that. I mean, it, it's it's almost it's almost it's scary though though because it's like you don't want it to be too good to be true. Like that don't that game was so lot like so one sided that it almost didn't feel real, right? Like yeah, I, I'm just hoping that it wasn't, you know. That's just my negativity. Yeah, don't let, don't let, don't let, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so let's look at it from a big picture. We had a guy that blitzed the hell out of him. And then we had a guy that's going to drop out and play coverage. The guy that blitzed the, the hell out of him got work, yeah. got crazy work, like my man Shady would say. Crazy work, <laughs> right? The dude that didn't blitz him got crazy work. Now, the only thing left, to do in order to, to see what Jalen Hurts is, is let's see when the team has enough man defenders where they can play press coverage and make the lanes a little bit tighter. Mm. And, and they can sprinkle in some pressure. It's only a couple of things. A team that disguises really well, that can confuse them, and a team that can line up and play man to man, and you got to make tight window throws, and you got to be efficient, and be, because body presence is there. Those are the only other questions to be asked. But he's checking off the list, and I'm telling you guys this stuff because blitz crazy check, zone play coverage. Let's see him make a mistake. I, I beat that check. Man to man team is coming up. Hopefully check. The great defensive coordinator, whoever that is, the next great defensive coordinator in the league, that dude's going to try to confuse you, send pressure, switch it up. He can answer those. By, like, once you see all of those things, you're like, okay, I know where he is. And it's, it's trending in the right direction. I love I love to see it, actually. All right, let's, let's go into quiz. Go Finally ahead. got my man some some plays. <laughs> like I tell you, man, if Quest keep making these plays, we ain't gonna be able to keep them. Because <laughs> the ball was running so fast, so fast. Oh, um, when I saw when I saw that, hold on before you go. When I saw when I when I saw that play and I saw him streaking down the side, I mean streaking down the middle of the field, I was like, damn, Jason was right. That boy got wheels. Oh, he can <laughs> run. He can run. The boy can run. He, he he can run, run. Like he's gonna he's gonna be up there for any team. When you can run that well, whenever you take, whenever you can take a, whenever you can take a tunnel screen to the crib, after you make a cut at the line of scrimmage, like usually a tunnel screen is like you go now, zero coverage. The ones that go, the ones that go to the crib is zero coverage. The first guy gets taken and you go and you beeline it. Last year versus Arizona, was that two years ago as Arizona? I don't know if it was it was no, it was last year. Was Arizona. Last year. Yeah, it was okay. Catch oh. a screen, makes a man miss at the line of scrimmage, and still makes it to the house. It's he fast, fast. It's different. It, it's a little bit different. So, so on that on that play cue, I want you to break that down for the fans, and and I'm going to give like 
Um, or 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 just to give you a little back a little background with that, it was it was cover six up top to the to the to the the short side of the field. Patrick Peterson and Harrison Smith had cover two at the bottom to the wide side of the field. They had cover four. The corner, the corner, they had a they had a a a, a, um, a rattler type of concept. It was a rattler type of concert. Um, the inside guy Goddard goes on a goes on a corner route. The outside guy goes on a post. It's a very very hard concept for cover four because the two players that are in that coverage got to be disciplined and stick to their rules. If number two goes vertical, what happens, Q? You got to stay with them. Safety got to stay with them. The safety turn it turns into man to man for the safety. The number two went vertical. The corner got a little bit nosy, and I'm let you take care of it from there. Because everybody's looking at the safety like the safety the wrong one. I'm like, no, the safety ain't wrong, bro. The the, the the corner. I didn't think. I thought that was on. Hold on. What's no the safety's the safety's name. What is his name? Um, Bynum. Bynum. So I need to go back because yeah. When so I, when so, I so, saw. It, so it was it was a rattler concept. The, the tight end was a little bit late, but he was still eight nine yards before he broke out. So what you call rattler is that like scissors? Scissors. Yeah. Okay. So that that right there beats. If you're not playing it right, that's a, that's the toughest coverage. If you're not playing it the correct way, and you don't know, if you're not expecting it, if you don't know that the, the team you're playing has that in their game plan, it's mm -hmm. very, very tough to cover. So technically, Corey Umlin, defensive co coordinator for, uh, you know, the Lions, and he was a secondary coach when he was um, with the Eagles, corners coach. He had a rule that if you're in quarters, any kind of quarters, quarters, no matter what happens, the cornerback has the post. Um, when I've when I've played in this defense, a similar defense, whenever we had quarters, if we were able, if me and the corner were able to talk it before the snap, we could pass those off. Yeah. So scissor outs is a, a post in the corner, essentially. I think the um the rather the the um the tight end is underneath it a little. Yeah, more he's shallow. under. He was yeah, he was more shallow, yeah. So long story short, it's 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 the corner's fault. But yeah, you're thinking you're gonna get that safety as a bonus help. You're thinking yeah. eventually, like, hey, we're just gonna let him throw it to the to the uh, tight end, you know, on the ten yard out or a ten yard out route or whatever. But anyway, long story short, it was it was absolutely blown from the beginning. They weren't lined up correctly. They were not in a position to be able to even if even if. The corner was over top on that post. There's no way he was going to be able to, to catch Quez on that post. Right? He was going to he, co was it, it, he was in between cover. He was in between cover two and cover four. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, is this cover two? I'm like, no, nah, the safety is straight back. Right. So he is cover four to that side. But he was like, he was looking and he was looking at number two the entire time. Yeah. He was looking for a flat defender. So I thought that I thought that he thought he was in cover two. He was just going to soft play it. I don't know. It, it was just a weird deal. But when I looked at the top, I was like, no, the safety is definitely in cover four. And before yeah. they before he turned around, he's like, dude, I got number two. And <laughs> you got number one and nobody got him. <laughs> and now Bynum is left to running behind him like he messed up. And I was like, man, that's a terrible feeling to be in because everybody's looking at him like, oh, man, he got burnt. Like, dude, Dantzler, if you don't, like, I don't, that's when we look back. Give him credit because he ain't look back and be like, yeah, they ain't tell them before. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know everybody, you get burned like that, especially on Monday night, all your homies going to be texting you, man, hey, what happened on that play, man? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that was, that was, that was, and that's what we're seeing early in this, like, the Eagles had some of those in the first game. They were, they were on it this game. Yeah. And, um, but a lot of teams, they're blowing coverages, like the Vikings. The the first game versus the Packers, all th all three of Justin Jefferson's huge plays were blown coverages. Yeah, you know, it's, so it's, the, the, it's happening around the league. That's, I mean, not to get off subject, but did you watch the Miami Dolphins game? Oh my the god! Right with the right. <laughs> talk I about mean, it. Talk about a perfect way to lose the game. <laughs> it was blown coverages left and right. Yeah, left the, and right. The, the Raiders, the the Cardinals. They were blowing coverage. I mean, it's 
Yeah. That's what happens yeah. when y'all take defense out of the game, man. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what happens when you go you go no preseason. <laughs> you go no preseason. And it's hard to communicate all of these calls for you guys, especially like, you know, you know, whatever it is, in and out or switch or you know top 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 or whatever it is like you're you're like defensive max all of that's on you guys and you can mess up in practice make us mess up in the preseason this is the preseason for the first couple of weeks so you're getting a lot of this um offensive balance you happy about it so the offensive balance goes a little something like the eagles threw the ball 34 times no no i said that wrong threw the ball 31 times ran it 34 times yeah now, Jalen Hurst is 11 of those. So you take out, I'm taking out that 11, 23 times. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. I mean, it's, again, like I said, it's, I mean, the balance was there. The balance is beautiful. Yeah. Um, but when everything is working, I mean, it's almost like no matter what psych and called, it was going to work on Monday night. So, yeah. I, I liked it. I think they kept, they kept, you know, the, the Vikings defense guessing. Um, you know, coming out empty sets, coming out, um, coming out, you know, run game, RPOs, you know, yeah. sometimes he's pulling. I really liked, and I don't know what they saw in the game plan, and I'm assuming it's because um, they, were, they were seeing a lot of cover two or maybe a lot of cover four, but I really liked the RPO with the flat routes by, um, by Dallas. Um, Dallas. I mean, because yeah. it's putting so much pressure if it's a rolled up corner, it's putting so much pressure on him because he's got to either read and run because he's the force. He's the force guy on the run um, mm-hmm. outside in. And then now you're supposed to be a force player, but now you got a tight end coming. So it's putting you in a bind. Um, and I, I really liked the game plan. I thought it was very intelligent, very smart. And, um, you know, it, it's for me, one, of the, I guess one of the things that um, I was very excited about was it was just refreshing. I mean, the game plan just looked, vibrant it looked on point it looked crisp it just looked like fun they just looked like they were having fun out there man it was yeah so let's let's i thought it was a great balance right so whenever you get 500 yards worth of offense they were at 499 they had 500 yards worth of of offense that's that's a great day you like to see them get in the end zone more and and um and and we'll talk about that Uh, we're going to talk about that now because it's, it's time for it because we got to we gotta stop with the offensive. Like, we know that we're RPO offense. Delay. Delay before you take that two yards down the field. I'm tired of getting called for that penalty. And I think it may be early in, early in the season, and the referees are just being jerks and trying to, you know, um, stop it from happening in the future. You know, usually early in, the, early in the season, they call a bunch of stuff that they, don't, they normally don't call at the end of the season. So I get that part. But, you know, if we're running RPOs and we end up passing the ball, we got to make sure that we're not getting that ineligible man downfield call. And also, I don't know what in the world is up with the referee. You see Devontae Smith offensive pass interference? That was the textbook of moving out of the way. And, and, and the guy stumbled because he was startled. He didn't yeah. stumble because he got hit. He stumbled because he was started. Oh, it's a dude in my face. And then he moved. That's perfect. Um, but overall, we had a lot of penalties at the wrong time, um, which, which stopped drives at a high rate. So this, this we, we didn't score in the second half. And the reason we didn't score in the second half, because we put our foot in our mouth, you know, over and over and over and over again. So I was hoping that we could, you know, I know we played well, but I think I, th- I thought that we could we could play a lot better in the second half. Now, are you surprised that they didn't come after him more, especially in the second half? Like, this is not working. He carving us up 24 points in the first half. He's on his way to scoring. He, he, um, you know, they're on their way to scoring 50. You think they would have come after him? Yeah, man, I was actually I was actually shocked. I was expecting it. Like you said, um, you know, he's he sitting back in his own. But, you know, uh, the defensive coordinator – I just found this out before, you know, me and me and Jeff, Jeff Mosher were talking and um, this was the same defensive coordinator that was with the uh, the Packers when uh, Fred Fred X had his fourth and 26 play. And so, oh. you know, sometimes those older defensive coaches, they get stuck in their ways, they get stubborn. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's the only reason because I was expecting, oh, like they got to come out and do something and they're just sitting back getting roasted. They got to do, do something. Yeah, do something. Yeah. 
Nothing is staying. You know what it is. They got the problem we had, you know, a few years ago. Um, they don't trust Dantzler because Dantzler's a big guy. He can't run. Yeah. Patrick Peterson is old and don't run the same and gets turned pretty easily now. So they don't feel like they can cover people. So therefore, they're going to play coverage and, at all costs. And so they're, that's, that's a tough place to be in. We know what that's like for years before we got Darius Slay. You know what I mean? We know what that's like. <laughs> and even with Darius Slay, having one of them is tough. You got Bradbury that's going to gonna, gonna at least, you know, uphold his end of the bargain. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't envy the Vikings right now because they have some depth. They have some Achilles heels in those corners. They definitely do. So, I, so I'm not surprised that they didn't because what he felt like we're playing with inferior people on the outside versus uh, over, and we're overmatched. You got Shannon Sullivan at the slot. Can he stick quiz? No. You got Patrick Peterson that's about 34 years old or whatever he is right now. Can he stick Devontae Smith or A.J. Brown? No, he can't. And Dantzler is 6'3", big. Maybe he can stick with him for a second at the line of scrimmage. But once you make him run, they can't. you can't keep up with them dudes running that fast. It's just tough. Yeah. So um, what do you think teams are going to do to our team now? They got to change it up because these two styles didn't work. What do you think? What do you What are you doing as a defense coordinator to stop this offense? This tough man. Um, well, they got the Commanders next. Yep. Um, the Commanders, the football team. Well, yeah. I think if if I'm a defensive coordinator, um, I'm going to look at the last four games um, of of you know the Eagles. Um, even if you have to go, you know, obviously you got to go to, you know, last, last year, but I'm going to look at the four, four games, the last four games first, I'm going to find out what, what things were successful against this team, what things did they struggle with? Um, I think for me, I think the perfect balance against this team is a little bit of what happened in game one and a little bit of what happened in game two. You have to bring pressure and you have to bring pressure in unconventional ways number one and then unconventional downs meaning if it's third and long you know maybe instead of playing you know coverage and hoping that they make a mistake maybe that's a situation where you blitz and you come after them and you know try to get a double on on uh, AJ and force the quarterback into making a mistake but you have to find out you have to find a weakness in this team and right now I think and it's, it's hard to find and I think the only weakness that I can can really see is when a team is blitzing and putting pressure on Hertz and you have a fast enough linebacker that can spy him and run him down. That's really the only thing that I haven't seen a team been able to do yet. And so if I if I have a team, maybe you take a maybe you take an extra linebacker off the field, you put a corner in as a linebacker instead of playing, you know, a, a dime, we used to call a penny. Um, you just put extra, just put all all DBs out there. I mean, honestly, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Put out all DBs out there, and uh, you put a spy on them, and you come after Hurts, and you see what happens. So yeah. you just have to, you have to. It's it's almost like a situation where if you're playing Peyton Manning, when you know we played, you have to do like some crazy stuff. You have to take some chances. You have to do some things that are gonna get him thinking and get him to doubt what he's seen. Yeah. Um, and and if and we've seen if he's if he's spot on and he knows what's going on and he can pick you apart, or if he you're if you're coming after him and you don't have anyone fast enough to, to run him down, he's gonna hurt you. So I think that would probably be my next thing is listen, I'm gonna mix it up, bring him some exotic looks, some stuff he hasn't seen, and try to hope he makes some mistakes. Yeah, see, it's the it's the like you said, it's a mix. It's it's pressure but it's zoned behind it and or if your guys can play man to man. Right. So those are the only two ways that you can do it. Todd Bowles mixed it. And that's, that's who's had the most success against Jalen. The two games that, that, that they, that they've played, he looked the most ordinary and you, every defensive coordinator is going to go back to the tapes that he had bad games with and try to figure out what those guys did. And, and I'm pretty sure they looked at games last year and was like, yo, when he got blitzed, 
but he he's shown improvement. Oh, yeah. when he when we we're in coverage, oh, he's shown improvement. Now you have to be a mastermind and get him, and it's and and that's a good thing. That's trending for us in the, in the right direction. Um, before we go to the defense segment, come by Launch Trampoline Park in Defer, New Jersey. We are building, still building one of the best parks in the entire United States as far as trampoline parks are concerned. We have Ninja Warrior, we have rock climbing, we have laser tag, we have a full arcade, full cafe. We have a new system that's to interact the jump. We put you inside the video game as your kid is jumping on the trampolines. We also have um, slam ball now that you can go and I can dunk on you on a air court it's pretty cool so we have a lot of things going on at, at launch trampoline park stop by um 1500 omnison road defer new jersey check us out launchdefer.com q we're going to get right into the eagles defense versus the vikings offense much was made about justin jefferson and hit the the his it was impossible to cover him the defense heard it everyone talked about it adam thielen Dalvin Cook, Kirk Cousins, they're the world beaters. They just beat the, the Packers. And uh, he's, you know, MVP type of candidate, 184 yards, two touchdowns last week. Defense kind of took that personally. Okay. Took it personally. Um, before we get into the, 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 the run defense, what do you think about the dog going secondary and slay and the guys taking it personally? Talk about that. Like, what is that like? Because there's games that when T.O. came to town, Lito took it personally. There's games when, you know, people talked about this other player, Asante took it personally. You know what that's like. Tell, tell me that mindset, that frame, because they clearly had a chip on their shoulder. Like, we're going to show these more who we are. That's it, man. That, that, that <laughs> right there. Just, just first of all, I love, I love uh, Slay's, his uh, interview after the game. You know, I'm watching it and, it was like no big deal to him, but he 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 said it without saying it. Like we heard everything y'all said. We heard all the stuff people were talking about Justin Jefferson. We knew, but we had to go shut that down. And so uh, to me, that was beautiful, man. Oh, like, hey, bro, <laughs> hey, my dear, get, you on this act? Get it? <laughs> oh, sit back, hey. sit back, pick it. Fouls <laughs> all over the TV on it. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh man, yeah, but we still here. <laughs> um, so you know, I love that man. I you know, I love as you do. Good defensive back play, great technique, smart plays, um, reading the defense, sitting on routes when you can, playing deep when you when you're supposed to. Um, it was just a flawless game by that secondary, and it was something that we've been starving for for a long time. I mean. We haven't had a, a game where the secondary – I mean, across the board, we've had games where some guys have just shined out. But literally across the board, every one of the players in that back that back four made a play or helped make a play. And that's beautiful, man. And, and my hat goes off to those guys. They came ready to play. It was beautiful. I, there is not too much more I can say, man. It was it was awesome. I don't know about Garden Giants. I don't even remember one play that they made. What, 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 play? what play? What play was that? I, I saw him – I saw him <laughs> – I saw him go up and, and shoot with the wrong hand for to tip a pass, and the dude dropped it. That's what I saw. Okay, right. So that's how I was like, dude. <laughs> the dude dropped it, though, right? He so, did drop I'll it, but if he, <laughs> if he go with the right hand, he going to hit it, and he going to be in position to catch the dude if, <laughs> if, if, if he misses it, right? So if he misses the guy, catch it. You know, at least we got a you know twenty five yard gain, thirty yard gain. <laughs> he go up with the wrong hand. It's touchdown. I was like, man, Listen, <laughs> man we still, we still, we, we, did, we just right? did pick. We just did. We still. T I know he's still transitioning. We gonna we gonna cut him some slack. He's transitioning. <laughs> cut him some slack. But um, but like you said, I was I was um, excited about. Um, D Slay, I was excited about everything that, that was transpiring there. And uh, you know what? You know what's funny is that I think that he took it personally, but they knew the game plan so well. 
like his first interception cue, he knew it was double post. He saw number two go B line for you can look at his eyes. He saw number two B line for the middle of the field. He was like, all right, this is either double post or Dino. Yep. And he, he he's in cover three. He's supposed to be outside. He was cheated a whole yard and a half inside. <laughs> and look, and Justin Jefferson is a very good young player. Very good young player. One of the best in the league. He got to understand when to attack technique and when to, excuse me, cute. Got a lot of stuff going on right here. Got lights going out. It's late. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> So he has to understand, Justin Jefferson has to understand when um, when you can attack someone's leverage and when you got to stay vertical. When you have a double post concept and you look at the DB and the DB is lined up two yards inside of you, a half a yard inside of you, whatever, you got to run at his, tech, his technique and hopefully he doesn't see your stem you don't stem it you just kind of run at him at an angle and hopefully he doesn't stem pedal inside to keep his leverage and most won't do it and then at that point a double post is a timing throw so you don't have time to be shucking and jiving trying to stick real big you don't have time to do that it's a timing throw so you cut off his angle on your departure right you gain your leverage back and at the end you cut across his face and hope hopefully the throw the quarterback can see what you're doing and make the throw right he still went vertical he's two yards inside and did this big stick that he couldn't even get out of he stuck so far outside of his body his right foot ended up right in front of him vertical and Slay was like, all right, that's an easy pick. At the least, you want to make sure that your next step is at a 45 degree angle. It can't be, it can't be forward. It has to be that way. I stick outside. I got to go that way. I can't go forward and therefore pick. And and so so just little things like that. It was like three rounds. I was like, this dude is good and he's getting open on a lot of talent and he got some wiggle and all those things. But just stopping and starting and just, just like understanding like the fine nuances of it, you know, you need to come on over to Jason Devon School. I'll be able to help you, son. <laughs> That's, That's funny, man. Because like, like it's 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 a tale of two tapes on that play. Um, I always heard it was a cardinal sin to not cross that corner's face on a bang eight. And it is. Yeah. And so, like, I'm just I'm telling like, you how you should, like, how he should have done it. Yeah, he no, got yeah, to, got to, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, like, it's a tale of like two. So, like, on the one end, you have a young receiver that absolutely did the the worst technique you could do, and then you have a veteran, a smart, you know, uh, experienced corner that played that route exactly how you should. Um, to me, the most important, the most, the most impressive part about it was I did think he read the Dino or I mean uh, the, the the double, double post. post. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, what I really love was that as a DB, you're always taught to play the goal line, like make make, especially when you're in the red zone in the goal line. Every throw is more on the line. Every there's there's very little air because if you go too high, it's gonna go, it's gonna sail over, it's gonna you know go out of bounds. And so watching Slay, he realized where he was at. He was about one one yard in the end zone, and he just stopped his feet, and he sat on that that outside post route. Yeah, and he said, "You know what? If he's gonna throw it, I'm in the perfect position to make a play. If he's gonna throw it over me, I'm in the perfect position to elevate the throw, and it's gonna go out the back of the end zone. And to me, if 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 you're a young DB and you get in the red zone and you're able to to play with enough depth and to be able to read the routes, that's the perfect technique to play that." I mean, you play yeah. the first, the first, you know, one two yards in the end zone and make them go behind you, and then you play in between the quarterback and the receiver. That was beautiful, man. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a great. It was a great play, and it, it was like you said. It was. It was a, a veteran play, and he had and he had a bunch of those, like the one where he almost picked the curl route. It was a curl that he almost picked, and Justin Jefferson took five, five. No, he took six steps. In order to get out of that break, I was like, "My gosh, son! You like you playing with a dude that's quick? You got to be efficient. Like you, like the most steps that anybody should take out in the NFL on any break, on any break, 
is four, sometimes five, depending on depending on um, you know which foot is up and which is not. If you understand which foot need to be up in order for it four, in order for everything to go on three or four, you're great. I say four because your break step people don't even count. Jerry Rice always broke with four steps. Everyone, when you talk to him, it's like, oh, he always took three steps. He did. It was a break step that people can't see or recognize. Defender can't recognize a break step a lot of times, right? So, but it's one of your steps. So it's break step, one, two, three. Break step, one, two, three. And if you can't run routes like that and you got to be efficient, when you play against Slate and he's sitting on you, you don't have time for wasted movement. So you got to be one, two, three, four. I was break step, one, two, three. Break step, one, two, three. I give you extra step if you got the wrong foot, foot up. But you can't take six steps. There's no route that you're ever going to win like that. So I was looking at it, I was like, oh, I, I see some chinks in his arm and this old head is <laughs> – <laughs> is discovering it all right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like, I, 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 I'm ready for this noise. So I thought he, I thought he did a, a did a good job on pretty much all of his routes. So we talked about that run defense. Was the run defense improved, or did the Vikings just refuse to run the ball? All right, man, they they had 11 rushes. I think they just they just refused to run. I mean they. I think they tried to get the run game going early and they just got shut down and they just went away from it. I think, you know, second half they came out a little bit and tried to get back into it. But by that point, the damage was done. Um, um, this game, honestly, you know, you got Delvin Cook. He was six six carries for 17 yards. Um, you can't win like that. I mean, I, you can't give Delvin Cook six carries. That's – that's just wrong. In any in any game, in anywhere, anyhow. But go ahead, you keep going. On yeah, no, I mean, I it was really it was really strange to me. I know they were down, you know, they were down what 20, 20 24, 20, 20, 21. 24, 21. Um or 17. <laughs> you, still whole, you still had the whole second half to try to get back in the game. And I I just I think they went away from the run game too soon. I think that they believed their hype a little bit with Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins. And that receiving core, and I, I think that they felt they had the upper hand in the passing game, and I think their game plan reflected that, and I think it came back to bite them because that secondary was ready to go, and I don't think they were prepared to really come in and, and try to attack the Eagles with the run game. Even if even if they did, I don't know how much success they would have had because, you know, besides Delvin Cook, I mean, their run game isn't really too potent. I mean. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Alexander Madison after that. Yeah. You know. I, I think I think that they could have made some hay on the Eagles running the ball. Now, this is why you want to get a big lead because it forces teams to be one dimensional. And a guy like O'Connell that um, you know, have been running, you know, passing the offense and that's coming from a passing tree. You get a lead on them, they automatically think I gotta pass it in order to get back in this game. Before you know it, Kev, uh, uh, Kirk Cousins is throwing the ball fifty times, and that's in your advantage, right? No quarterback should be throwing the ball fifty times. Only I'm, the only person I'm trusting with the ball fifty times is Tom Brady, yep. right? Like fifty times is just too many times to be throwing the football, and it doesn't always lend um, lead to wins. So because the team has an unlimited time to come back, you throw the ball 50 times, that ball's going to be on the ground so many times. Even if you score, it's so many, it's so much more time on the clock, you know? So uh, getting away from the run game, it made you one dimensional and the team was ready for you defensively in the defensive backfield and also the linebackers, they were playing with the hair on fire in the passing game. They have let, they had 11 PBUs. Too. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. That in one game, that was crazy. They 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 played they played out of their minds. Like TJ Edwards knocking down passes, Bradbury knocking down pass, Vontae with an interception. Like they were they were balling. Yeah. So um, let's let's get these last few questions. Uh, as far as def the defense, Sweaty got home one time without the without the rush. And I think yeah. maybe, maybe Fletch late in the game got there without the rush, maybe late in the game. No, but I think that was a rush. That was a rush. So mm -hmm. they're not generating much pass rush when it comes to just that four-man pressures and what they're doing. 
Do you think that that's a problem because they have to, and they were able to get home, but they were able to get home when they blitz Kirk Cousins. Do you think that's a problem? Or do you think it's not that big of a deal? I think it can be. Um, you know, I think Kirk was getting the, getting the ball out pretty quick. I think it's it's tough because I I'm a I'm a huge blitz guys, and I think that um, Gannon did a very good job timing up the blitzes. I think he did a great job designing them, and when he did bring pressure, he was he had Kurt running scared, and he was just chucking the ball, just up. just throwing the ball <laughs> up. I was like, is this is this the old like? I thought we were like, that was crazy. I was like, this dude is literally throwing grenades right now because of the pressure. <laughs> Earlier in the game, the dude, we had a free blitzer. He threw it away. It was a dude wide open. I, he just threw it away. I was like, what is going on right now? Cornerback is uh, cornerback got beat. I don't know who it was, but got beat on the slant. He didn't even look at the slant. He's like, oh, they got a free rusher. Get this. <laughs> like, like, bro, like, he was rushing from depth. You could throw that slant. Like, he was just like, he looked at the numbers, was like, F this. Like, y'all don't pay me enough for this. Like, it was weird. It was so weird. I was like, am I playing? Are we playing Peyton Manning after his neck injury? Like, like, what are we doing right now? You know, Peyton Manning was sliding in the pocket. Like, he going down. He ain't taking no shots. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't know what was going on with that. I will say this though, I do think I think the um, I'm okay with the pressures. I do think we need to start, you know, generating more pass rush without having the blitz. But I like what I saw. I will say this: what I don't, I did not enjoy seeing was um, I think I saw two or three times I saw Hassan Reddick dropping. In the car, oh, he got pieced up, and he, he's he's only going to it's only going to get worse, ladies and gentlemen. Go 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 ahead, go ahead and discuss this. But when I saw it, I saw it two times. I was like, thank God they run the, a Texas route, where it's back in the inside. It, like, yeah, but go ahead, talk about this. Yeah, he just looks, <laughs> he looks so uncomfortable trying to drop in the coverage. I mean, and it's crazy because he's at, he's crazy athletic, but I'd rather see him rushing, man. I don't want to see him dropping. Exactly. Cannon, please just just find somebody else to do that. Let Hassan ready get after the quarterback. Just yeah, just just yeah. Figure out a defense where 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 somebody else is carrying, right? Because <laughs> you put that on tape long enough, they are gonna start putting that guy up the field. They gonna run double posts, right? Mm -hmm. With a wheel, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you done. <laughs> They're gonna run two people up the field, take away the safety, take away the corner, and now it's Hassan Reddick with 25 yards to cover this person. And it's gonna it's gonna be someone like Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> it should have been like, yeah, it, it, it's gonna be somebody like, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be somebody. If they're gonna be fast, they're gonna be it's gonna be somebody. Yeah. And uh, so, so that's that's definitely a spot in our defense that that that's that's pretty scary. But I, I don't. I, that's not Reddick's fault. They oh, like yeah, no, to no. play this defense, you know, and that's not what he does. But they want him to do it, and he probably the the best one out of the the ones that that they can do it, you know. So I, I just hate I, I I hate I hate seeing people out of position. I'd rather see Edwards chasing that somehow. Design a blitz just. You gotta let people do what they do best. Yeah, and he didn't even look like he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, he like man. <laughs> That's yeah. like when Chip when Chip Kelly had Trent Cole playing playing uh, cloud cloud cover three or, or what yeah. Was he doing? You listen. Yeah, he, he had him and Brandon doing that stuff. I used to be like, <laughs> "What are you doing?" You listen to Trent tell it though. He was like, he was out there locking people down. He's like, "Man, they put me out there. I was out there. Then number one receiver, that X, I was locking them down. I'm like, okay, Trent. <laughs> yeah, Trent <laughs> over there lying. <laughs> yeah, Trent, that's what he over there doing. The lying. Uh, talking about locking somebody down. You know, stop it. You play defensive end. You ain't locking nobody down. <laughs> I never felt more disrespected in my life for the two times Clay Matthews lined up on me one time. I, I, the disdain in my face when I saw him line up, I was like, are you, how dare you? <laughs> well, have you lost your mind? <laughs> he all ready to go. Man, I had a five-yard stick route 
this dude wasn't nowhere near me at the at top of that route. Like, I pieced him up his line straight, whoop, whoop, and then hit him with one of those at the top. That boy was over there. I'm like, where did he go? Where did he go? And ended up with a 20-yard 20, a 20 stick route. And later in the game, he got lined up on me. That boy almost called timeout. <laughs> He was like, yo, yo, he was waving to people. I'm like, dude, I ain't even part of this play. But I'm like, Mike, we should do this right now. <laughs> but, yeah, that's disrespectful. Oh. You get one of them dudes on you, man, you better, like, yeah. I couldn't have came back in the locker room getting covered by that dude. Oh, man, that's too funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last thing, last thing. He's not blissing a he, – he, he, Timely blitzes, when you have veteran players, though, it makes it everything better because the veteran players understand the rules of the defense. When you got Bradbury, you got Slay, you got Vontae that's played in this. Even Vontae's pick was a very good play on a pick because he, he, he was in coverage. He had flat responsibilities under man. He latched on to him, completed his assignment to cut off his throw. And then he's like, oh, let me do a little bit more. He he think I'm like, uh, let me let me back up into this lane and get this pick. It was a veteran move. It wasn't just I'm going to play him in the middle and he throw it to the bottom one. You know, he's like, oh, I'm going to bait him into this throw because it ain't much more he can do in this position. So he baited him by by covering his man and, and cutting that throw off and just backed up when he feel like his eyes are off of him. You know, that was a veteran thing, a veteran thing to do. On the blitzes in the red zone, Slay is like, dude, you can do all of this juking and, and trying to shake me if you want. I'm flat-footing this thing because that blitz is coming, and I'm looking at the quarterback. So I'm getting to my spot, which is that two yards on the goal line. I ain't backing up. You got to throw it over the top of me, and I'm looking at the quarterback. And he got his hands on three out of the four balls down there. Yep. <laughs> Like, that's veteran play, man, and that, or two out of the three. No, it was three out of four because they had a penalty. But, yeah. And I got to give big ups to my man, Denard. You know, he's the, the secondary coach. Um, he was with me in, uh, <clears throat> when I was in St. Louis. He was a he was a young young buck back then. But uh, I'll check him out. They, they, doing, they doing the thing. doing this thing with them boys, man. Let's do anything. All right, last question, Q. What are we expecting from the front of uh, – I'm about to call them football team commanders. What do you think, um, you know, Carson Wentz coming in town, Eagles defense, you think we can handle them? Um, I think – Hold on. He, he, I, he In his revenge tour, to give him some credit, he beat Doug already. Now he got to come back. He got the revenge tour coming back. <laughs> what do you think of this? He beat Doug, but they lost to the Lions, though. I mean, yeah, they got worked by the Lions. They didn't just lose to them, yeah. Um, I think I think they're gonna put up a, a better fight than the Vikings did. I think you know Ron Rivera. He knows this area. He knows his team. He's a old school coach. Defense, run the ball, um, play. You know, I I think it's gonna be a tougher game than this. Um, I'm not, I won't say I'm not as worried about Carson. Uh, Carson can get dangerous. He can get hot at times. Um, that receiving core is not bad. Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Um, gosh, what's the other? Um, Who's it? Cam? It, oh, oh um, Curtis Samuel. Yeah, Samuel's having a good season yeah. so far. Um, so I, I think, <laughs> I think we're going to, I think we're going to be okay. Um I think we're gonna we're gonna win this one. I just I don't think it's gonna be as easy as this last game. Cause I do gonna, go ahead. It's gonna be a tough game because this is an emotional win. Jalen plays good, defense plays good. You're going against one of those things. You got everything to play for. It's Monday night, it's high, the city's buzzing, everybody's on sports talk radio talking about the Eagles are the NFC um, representatives in the Super Bowl. ESPN is talking about it. They're the best team in NFC, all of these things. It's very, very hard to overcome that stuff mentally because you begin to feel like you arrived. And this is a very, very vulnerable game for the our team our team this is a very vulnerable we're vulnerable right now 
And the Redskins is coming off, or not Redskins, the Commanders are coming off a bad loss. They're going to want to play better. And you've come off a, a great win under, you know, and, and being lauded as the best team in NFC. Like, it's it's dangerous. And, and, and it scares me a little bit. Now, can Carson, can we make Carson do some Carson stuff and give us the football? And I think you can do that if you give him some pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the only like, the last thing I add to that, I hate I hate feeling like the old guy. We always go go back to our days, but it never mattered how good we were record record wise and how bad the the back then Redskins now Commanders were. Those games were always brutal, physical, tough, hard nosed games, and we had to fight in all those games. So if the if the Eagles come into this game with the mindset of we, it might be a fight, and if it's a fight, we're gonna have to finish it they'll be all right. But if they're coming in still riding that high, like you said, it's almost like a trap game feeling. Like if you still come in riding that high, a team like this can definitely put you back, bring you back down to earth. So definitely can. Cause when you're playing division opponent opponents, like you said, records are out the window. They've seen you so much. They know you so much, you know, they know everything about you. So the game is going to be close. It's not going to be a blowout. It's going to be a close game. It's all, it's always a close game. So um, that, that's where we are. I'm excited. Overall picture. I'm excited about Jalen Hurston's development. I'm excited about all the receivers being utilized. Finally, first time we've ever seen the receivers get, you know, that much love in a game in a long time. So I, I appreciate that. Um, Shane Steichen and, and, and Nick Sirian. Like, I, I appreciate you incorporating the receivers in this game plan. And um, 500 yards of offense, I, I like that. And I love the secondary. I, secondary and the linebackers. I think the defensive line has to do a little bit better job. But team was on fire. That's my overall takeaway. I'm excited about the upcoming week. Like, they're making this exciting again. So, the city is buzzing. We're happy about it. Go Birds. Absolutely. Go Birds, man. To everyone that tunes in, make sure you check us out at InsideTheBirds at gmail.com or send your questions to InsideTheBirds at gmail.com. Check us out at uh, Inside the Birds YouTube channel, also Amazon and Apple. Make sure that you're tuning in each and every week, dropping that fresh stuff for you guys. And to everyone that um, watches us faithfully, thank you guys um, to um adam and to jeff and to josh and to travis uh did i say that right did i say his name right tyler i said travis tyler my man tyler i gotta meet you so i guess i can put a name um with the face so everyone thank you guys for tuning in to another week and q you got the final word as always man it's a pleasure um i love talking ball with you and this is the first time i feel like we're both happy, right? We got the ball, the ball thrown around on multiple different receivers. We got some blitzes coming from from Gannon. It was a good day. So it was a good day, day man. <laughs> it was a good day. Finally, <laughs> peace. See you guys next week.